Hi, welcome to Cinema Synopsis. Today I will show you a crime, thriller, action film from 2021 titled Wrath of Man. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. When two security guards are transferring money in a cash truck, a group of people dressed as construction workers stop them with a signboard. As soon as they stop, the workers take out weapons and explosives to rob it and kill the two guards along with a civilian. After that ghastly incident, Fortico security tries to increase their, well, security. Five months later, when a new recruit Patrick Hill joins them as a security guard, his new boss Terry lets him know about the tragedy and that no one got caught for that crime. He warns Patrick to stay focused on the job. Patrick undergoes the basic training and tests under trainer Hayden, whom they call Bullet. Patrick barely passes the 70% score he needs to achieve in the security tests. He rams the truck into boxes while reversing and scatters the bullets to all parts of the target while shooting a gun. Bullet introduces Patrick as H to his colleagues in the locker room. One of them is Boy Sweat Dave, who doesn't get Patrick's humor in their first exchange, but H impresses Dana, their lone female member. All the staff, including Sticky John, whom H replaces to become Boy Sweat's partner, treat H as a rookie, throwing sarcastic remarks and gestures. Bullet joins H and Boy Sweat for H's initial collection rides. He warns H before getting into the truck. We ain't the predators. We're the prey. On the drive, Boy Sweat tells H that he was supposed to drive the armed truck that went into trouble five months back but he was sick. He was at his mom's place, and she was his alibi, adds Bullet from behind. H accompanies Bullet when they go out to collect money from a bank and it goes down without a hitch. They reach back to their depot safe on the first day through the heavy security gate and metal entrance guarded by Sticky John. At the end of the day's work, the guards swipe out their IDs and place them on a board before going for some beer and pool games. Bullet invites H to join them. H asks Bullet to give him a minute and secretly looks at the IDs of his new colleagues. At the pool game, other guards insinuate Sticky John to confront H, and H puts him down savagely, giving him money to buy himself a beer and drink it alone in a corner. Sticky John decides not to prolong the humiliation by leaving quietly. Bullet sarcastically calls H a social magician for his rudeness. On one of their collection rides, Bullet goes out alone to collect a small amount of 10 grand. When Boy Sweat tries to contact him, they hear Bullet being taken by some robbers. Boy Sweat loses it and suggests to H that they should leave with the 2.5 million in the truck. The robbers will leave Bullet as 10 grand is too little money to kill him, but H firmly tells him that they are only leaving the place with Bullet and he can leave if he wishes. Boy Sweat decides to stay as they follow the robbers' orders to drive and pull up the truck at a deserted place. One of the masked robbers steps out from a vehicle in front of them and pulls out Bullet, bruised and handcuffed. He puts a gun to Bullet's head while the robber on the transceiver tells them to throw the money in their trunk. Boy Sweat tells H the robbers will kill three of them and run with the money, but H tells him to shut up and goes in the back. He throws the money bags one by one into the flatbed but deliberately misthrows one out onto the floor. The robber warns H against playing any games and Boy Sweat starts sweating, asking H to just follow their orders. When a robber steps out to pick up the bag, H jumps into action, shooting him and the robber holding bullet, as well as the others, leaving just the one who talked to them. H leisurely chases him into an abandoned warehouse, leaving Boy Sweat and Bullet perspiring in awe. It doesn't take long for H to catch up and ask the robber who he works for. He chooses to insult him instead of answering and H makes the thing go grata ta ta. Boy Sweat and Bullet arrive and H asks Boy Sweat if he's alright or did he make poo poo. As they both stay in shock, H unmasks the faces of other dead robbers but doesn't find what he is looking for. Two FBI officers come in to inquire about the incident. They ask H how his shooting during the incident was so precise while his shooting score was pretty average on the test. He says he may have focused more as he was in a situation of kill or be killed. They then let H watch the security video from the old robbery where three people were killed, and ask H if he can find any connection with the incident he was in. H focuses on the pixelated face of the guy in the center of the video, who shot and killed those three people. However, he tells the FBI officers that it wasn't them. The officers later tell their boss, FBI agent King, that H was the guy they have been trying to catch for 25 years. But their boss replies, let the painter paint. King instructs them to stay clear of H. Following the violent incident, Terry suggests he should stay away from truck duty for a month and attend some sessions with a shrink as per the company protocol, but neither H nor Fortico's owner Blake likes the idea. The boss tells Terry not to punish H but promote him, as it's good for everyone and their publicity as well. As a result, H goes right back to truck duty, and when he walks inside the depot the next day, he earns the respect from his colleagues. Afterwards, H also gets an assistant to bring him the personal files of all Fortico security personnel, Dana's family pictures, and the autopsy report of the person who died in the old robbery incident. Three months later, with only Bullet accompanying H in the truck, they run into another group of robbers with guns. The robbers paint all the windows and mirrors of the truck black. Bullet immediately calls in code red, but they use the door handle hole to gas them out of the truck. Bullet goes down on the ground coughing. H steps out of the truck and is ordered to get on the ground but as soon as he uncovers his face, the robbers get out of there. 
Terry gets astonished by the incident where H again comes out as a savior, but their boss just tells him to keep crushing it. Bullet also privately tells Boy Sweat the story calling H a dark spirit. Dana finally lets H know about her feelings for him leading to a sleepover at her place. However, in the middle of the night, H interrogates her at gunpoint about some money he found and asks her if she is working as an insider. She denies it and says that she just stole it on one of her assignments. H says he knows all her contacts including her parents and warns against keeping any information from him. Five months earlier, H is going out with his son Doug. His assistant Mike, who was the same robber that stopped the robbery when he saw H in the guard uniform, calls him about a last minute issue in their robbery plan. Mike asks Doug to do a small job as one of their actual guys can't make it to the place which is very near to H. All he needs to do is to observe a Fortico truck come out of a gate and tell them if it turns left or right. H reluctantly agrees. On their drive, H finds a food truck near the gate. He lies to Doug about being hungry and parks the car. He asks Doug to sit inside before walking to the food truck and ordering two burritos. He observes the truck take a right turn and passes the info to Mike. However, the truck gets stopped by another group of robbers dressed as construction workers near the place where H had parked his car. One of the robbers shouts at Doug to step out of the car. Doug calls H but he is still busy with Mike on the call, and he has no view of what is happening. Doug gets out of the car and lies flat facing the ground as ordered. But, he turns his head to see a robber kill two guards. Meanwhile, H starts walking back and sees his son being killed. He starts running but is shot down as well. When H comes back to consciousness after three weeks, he is in a hospital bed with his son dead. Doug's mother blames H and calls him cold. He contacts his friend and FBI agent King about the perpetrators, but he could only give a list of known criminals that H can go after and do his worst to find the actual person that killed his son. For the next couple weeks, H, Mike, and their crew wage a war on the list, burying bodies whenever they seem fit. After a lot of rage and no results, Mike suggests that they need a different approach. H takes Mike's suggestion and tells him that he would go back to London for a while. However, H makes his assistant create him a thorough fake identity and gets under the name of Patrick Hill with experience in the security industry that's sufficient to join Fortico Security. Ever since he joined, H has been looking for the insider and for the actual robber that shot his son. A few more months ago, six resentful military veterans with different financial difficulties regroup under their former sergeant, Jackson, and decide to rob wealthy Middle Eastern people after one of them, Jan, calls for it, starting with a few hundred thousand dollars. As time goes by, their ambitions grow as well. While everyone still respects their sergeant, Jen shows none of it. Getting irritated by the number of middlemen they need to pay to turn their robbed items into cash, they decide to directly rob the cash trucks by paying just one insider and splitting the money seven ways. As their robberies go into millions, Jackson asks them to be careful to not quit their jobs and buy anything flashy to make anyone suspect them. But Jan barely listens to any of what Jackson, or anyone, for that sake, says. When they get together for Jackson's birthday, they decide to plan and rob the Fortico's truck with a good insider buddy of Jackson. After rigorous preparation and planning, they dress like construction workers and sit on the site when H parks his car on the roadside. That shouldn't be a problem, Jackson says, and assigns a member to take care of the car. They stop the cash truck and get the guards out. Jan keeps a gun on the guards, while one of them pulls Doug from the car and makes him lie on the ground. The others transfer the cash bags from the truck to their vehicle. Everything goes as planned until one of the guards tries to pull his gun on Jan. After a scuffle, Jan shoots the guard down before gunning down the second guard as well. When Jackson asks if everything is okay on the earpiece, Jan says okay before finding Doug on the floor lying as a witness. He shoots down Doug mercilessly. One crew member shouts at Jan for killing the kid before finding H running towards them. He asks Jan to shoot H's legs, but Jan fires at H's chest and looks at his wide open eyes as he lies on the ground before getting into their vehicle. After several months, the group meets again, itching for an even bigger robbery. Jackson tells Jan that he is lucky to still be part of their team. He then tells the team that their next robbery can fund them and their families for life and that they wouldn't need any more heists after this one. But this plan is not as foolproof as earlier ones, he warns. But as none of them waver, Jackson reveals his plan to rob not one cash truck but all of them from the Fortico Depot on Black Friday, where there could be anywhere north of $150 million. Back at the Fortico Depot, Terry alerts the guards of the special levels of security they need to take on Black Friday. Before going for their final heist, Jackson scorns Jan for his expensive spending despite his advice. On Black Friday, Bullet and H drive out. After their last collection, Bullet lets H know that he is the insider for the group that had robbed their truck all those months back, killing three people. The guards needed to be killed, but the kid's death was unfortunate. He then tells H that he had taken the bullets out from his gun already and that they are planning to rob the depot today. He tells H to stay calm and cooperate to stay alive. He then switches off the cameras on the truck before taking it to a warehouse where Jackson and his men, all geared up in bulletproof armor, join them. One of them searches H and slaps him, warning him to be a good boy during the heist. Jan and three others come inside the cash truck, while Jackson and one other follow them in their own vehicle. 
Their truck is the last one to arrive at the depot. The four armed men come out of the truck, take control of the parking place, and take Terry, Boy Sweat, H, and even Bullet as hostages. Dana goes inside a cash truck to take a signature from another guard steward who calls her inside the truck to show a funny video. The robbers tie H's hands and legs while carrying Bullet along with a gun to his head, asking the inside staff to open the metal door of the vault. But, Sticky John hits the warning siren as soon as he sees them, and the staff fire at the robbers. One of the four robbers places an explosive at the metal door before joining others to return the fire and kill many of the guards that come at them. The ballistic plates in their armor save the robbers from most of the fire but one of them gets severely injured before they breach the metal gate and open the outer gate for Jackson and their other guy to come in with their vehicle. Jackson takes control of the depot and asks his crew to sweep the building while the police arrive outside and alert the SWAT. They start shifting the cash into bags while counting down the 8 minutes that the SWAT team takes to arrive. They need to leave before SWAT arrives as their vehicle can stop a cash truck, unlike the police cars, which can be punched through. The robbers neutralize all the guards besides Dana, Stewart, and Shirley, who are at the back of a cash truck. While Stewart says they should wait for the SWAT team, Shirley says it would be too late and starts shooting at one of the robbers. H takes advantage of the shooting as it distracts the robber standing by his side. He shoots the robber's foot with his own gun before choking him out. He then frees himself with a knife and also unties Terry and Boy Sweat, who asks him for advice on what to do. Do whatever you like, he tells them before putting on the armor from the dead robber. Boy Sweat tries to follow H to face the robbers, but Terry drags him back, to go back to safety through the back door with him. Shirley gets shot down, but Dana and Stuart collect guns and try to fire at the robbers. H approaches another robber, makes him take off his helmet and shoots him. The others take notice of that right away. Boy Sweat gets a body shot into his bulletproof vest by a robber, whom H catches. A scuffle and exchange of blows ensue for a while before H takes a shot at him, but only with an empty gun. However, the knife on that robber's armor helps him put that robber down as well. Boy Sweat looks at H's bloody head in terror as H removes his helmet. However, he decides to fight and follows H this time. As Jackson calls his remaining men to move out with the cash, Bullet reaches Dana and Stewart, asking them for a gun. Stewart passes it to him, after which Bullet mercilessly shoots down both Stewart and Dana without a flinch. H shoots down two more robbers before Bullet shoots down H. Bullet then calls out Boy Sweat like a buddy and shoots him down as well. Jackson, Jan, and Bullet, the only survivors of their crew, leave the depot with cash in a cash truck punching through the police vehicles. Jackson starts to bleed heavily with an injured neck before they reach a building's garage as planned, escaping the police. Bullet and Jan shift the money bags onto a carrier for the elevator, while injured Jackson stays behind in the truck, making his gun ready for Jan, but he catches him in the act and slits his throat without a noise. He tells Bullet that Jackson died of injuries as they go down to a secret tunnel and ride on two four-wheeled bikes to reach a car parked at the other end. Weary of Jan, Bullet tries to do the same that his pal Jackson failed to do, but even he is slow. Jan shoots Bullet in the head without a second thought before reaching his place with all the money bags. As he treats himself to a drink, he hears a phone ring. He looks at his phone, but it's not ringing. He follows the sound and finds a mobile phone in one of the money bags. Ain't you gonna answer? Jan asks if H wants a share of the money, but H throws his son's autopsy report at him. Jan reads it out as it says his four bullets had hit the liver, lungs, spleen, and the heart of H's son. Jan then remembers H's face from the robbery scene. H returns the favor on behalf of his son, liver, lungs, spleen, and heart. When H is on his way out limping with injuries, King comes behind H to ask him if he is done. We're done. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe Cinema Synopsis if you want to watch more recap videos.